Dorrell, who's now chair of the NHS Confederation. And here in the studio, a clinical negligence lawyer, Suzanne White, and Professor Gary Ford, a consultant who provided expert reports on this case uh, to the police and the General Medical Council. A very good evening to you all. Stephen Dorrell, you were health secretary in the 1990s. Would you put this down to a cultural problem that existed within the NHS? Well, I think, first of all, the first thing to say is that this is an appalling and shocking story. And anybody who's been anywhere close to the healthcare system over that 20 year period owes the families an apology and a recognition that it's no good saying we did our best or it was understandable. The truth is the system failed and we need to turn around, face that fact and ask ourselves what we can do to ensure that we minimize the risk of it happening again. And I think it is partly a result of the instinct because the health service is a massively popular organization, it does massively good work most of the time. Uh, we do, there is a tendency for those who work in the healthcare system uh, to think they did their best. Well, on this occasion, their best was nowhere near good enough. And we have to find ways of getting to that conclusion when it arises much more quickly and, and in a much more responsive way, in a way that listens uh, to the patients and to their families uh, rather than uh, justifying our own actions. Let, let, me just, let me just pin you down a little bit on the culture issue because I just want to know what exactly you think the culture issue is. Is it deference so nurses don't want to challenge doctors? Is it doctors wanting to protect doctors? Is it something about no one looking at data? Is it an attitude to whistleblowers that basically no one blows the whistle because they think they'll be punished by the management? Just give me in, in three sentences what you think it is. Well, I, I think uh, I, there are two things of the list. I, I think there's an element of truth in everything you said. There are two that I'd particularly focus on. One is uh, we need to be much better at looking quickly at the data in order to understand what's going on in an individual part of the healthcare system quickly. And the second thing is that I think it's critical that we uh, rediscover the importance of professional discipline. You talked about the GMC, uh, the bishop also talked about nurses and pharmacists all knowing what was going on. It calls to mind uh, the words of the person who did an inquiry into the Bristol scandal nearly 30 years ago now. He said the real scandal of the cases like this is not that nobody knows, it is that everybody knows. That's the scandal. Okay. Let me put the same institution. I do think the institutions have changed a bit. I think the CQC, the Care Quality Commission, is a uh, much more effective machinery for looking at outcomes achieved than was the case 20 years ago. I do also think, although uh, the GMC has a lot of questions to answer in this case, uh, the GMC and indeed the professional regulatory structure has changed somewhat. Uh, but uh, can I just pick up the point that uh, was just made of a doctor saying uh, that he didn't want to make a, uh, to, he didn't want to raise a, a particular uh, concern that was just referred to. I think that is, flies absolutely in the face of what I understand professional obligation to be. Prof those of us who are not professionally qualified look to the professions as the way that you deliver high quality health care. And I think it's essential that the, prof the, the professions by which I mean doctors, nursing, pharmacists, the regulated professions, read their own... Right. It's an obligation, it's not, a, it's not a, a favor you're doing somebody. Well, it's, it's a collective ownership right. of standards within the profession. We, we, we need to live there. Thank you. Some really interesting points by all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.